Are small electric cars made in China the right answer to Europe's production constraints? Small, affordable EVs for a wide public. China is the pacemaker for, uh, uh, in, bringing, in bringing small electric vehicles to the roads of the world. Small cars powering a mobility transformation and making electromobility affordable for the masses. The affordability of electric mobility, this is one of the key factors to master the transition uh, towards carbon neutral mobility. Why are so few low-cost electric cars on the road in Europe? At the lower car segment, there's no product offer from uh, yeah, Volkswagen or uh, other European or Western uh, car manufacturers. Right now, the risk is extremely high that the electric car will no longer be affordable for the average citizen. E-cars made in Germany are simply too expensive. China could close this gap in the European market. Affordability is very important for European consumers today, so I think there's a very high demand in the market for small vehicles. What needs to happen for Europe to also enjoy small, affordable EVs? The Chinese industry is now in a, in a position to democratize electric mobility for the world. Rev is on the lookout for answers. They've realized that small vehicles are how you move e-mobility forward. Dieter Treschka from Lower Saxony imports small electric cars from China to Germany. One model, the 35 kilowatt Dayun ES2, at a price of 34,500 euros, minus the German government's environmental bonus. 11,000 euros cheaper, the Jidu D2S with 27 kilowatts. There's a huge range of small EVs, but only in the Chinese market. The Wuling Hongguang, for example, is China's best selling electric car with a price equivalent to just 3,700 euros. You can buy a BYD Seagull there for just 10,400 euros. And a Geely Panda Mini costs just 4,900 euros. The Chinese e-car market is a bargain hunter's paradise. Around every fifth car can be had for the equivalent of less than 15,000 euros. 12% cost between 15 and 20,000. 37% between 20 and 30,000, 21% between 30 and 50,000, and only 11% cost more than 50,000 euros. China supplies the market you need with small vehicles, including in Europe. Dieter Trashka built a business selling the Russian car brand Lada in Germany. But since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the business with Lada's has ground to a halt. And so he's made Lada Germany's dealer and service network, with more than 320 branches available to Chinese car makers. From the beginning, we've known that the European market is important for electric vehicle manufacturers. We did a bit of research. German car owners drive an average of 40 kilometers a day. These small electric vehicles have a range of 300 kilometers. That's enough for a week. So I think there's a very high demand in the market for small vehicles. In China, the small EV market has been built up systematically. Between 2015 and 2022, the average price dropped from 66,000 to 32,000 euros, while in Europe it rose from 49,000 to 56,000. The development of China's electric car industry was supported for decades by governmental policies and subsidies. From the start, there's been a focus on what kinds of vehicles are actually produced. These policies in China and this whole EV strategy have a number of reasons why they are promoting small cars. 
They include electric range, how far they go, how efficient they are, how many resources were used, in other words, certain efficiency standards. And so they're also making sure that the cars don't get bigger and bigger like they do here. In Europe, big cars dominate the electric market. Small electric cars play only a minor role, like the electric Fiat 500, which can be had for 35,000 euros. The Renault Zoe, which costs around 37,000 euros. Or the Ego Life, which Aachen University professor Gunther Schuh brought onto the market in a small series for 24,000 euros. In Europe, only 7% of all electric cars sell for less than 30,000 euros. 45% cost between 30 and 50,000. And a whopping 48% go for more than 50,000 euros. Cars that are mostly heavier than two tons and run contrary to the concept of economical electric mobility. Also an electric car has physics and uh, the heavier the car is, uh, you have to accelerate it and, and uh, that makes no sense. We have a tendency towards ever bigger and wider vehicles with poor aerodynamics that are inefficient at high speeds. That's not a good development. It's a shame that with electrification, inexpensive small cars are disappearing. Basically, the cars for the people. In Europe, there's not much profit to be made with small e-cars at the moment. It's not only the small number of units produced that increases costs. The decisive factor is that the battery accounts for around 40% of the total cost of an e-car. And European car makers mostly buy them at a high price from China, the world market leader in electricity storage. The government in Beijing has ensured that China controls the entire value chain of electric cars, giving it complete autonomy in production. The Chinese Politburo sets out the strategy for the development of the country's automotive industry in five-year plans. While European leaders lack coherent plans to make e-mobility viable for the masses. We need the government, we need the regulations to make it happen. It's not the industry, it's the regulators which uh, make it impossible that small electric driven cars are sold in Europe. For example, uh, we reduced the subsidies for electric vehicle cars, and that will hurt most um, the small cars. The Dacia Spring, Europe's cheapest electric car, was available in Germany in 2022 for 11,500 euros, after a subsidy of 9,000 euros. In 2025, without subsidies, it'll cost almost twice as much, while a high-end electric SUV from BMW will increase in price by just 20% to €55,000. At least Volkswagen has announced that it will launch an electric car for less than €25,000, but not until 2026. Yeah, you can always wish for cars coming earlier, but uh, we had to make this car profitable. We are not in uh, social business, and this is about us, our company, going forward and creating money that we can reinvest in the future. A new in-house battery plant and a new factory in Spain, where labour is cheaper, should help keep production costs of the ID2 low. But the new plants won't be finished before 2026. Until then, German small electric car buyers will have to make do with vehicles imported from China by Dieter Traschka. But EU hurdles will have to be overcome before these cars can launch in Europe. The so-called certification phase, this procedure, there are 80 long pages for the homologation. We're lucky that we've teamed up with Lada Germany. They've also given us lots of tips and assist us with the homologation. In the homologation process, a car must be adapted to the technical requirements of the European Union. The Alaris company in Rheinland-Pfalz also sells Chinese cars in Germany. The Jidu and a small car from Dorsen, which Alaris sells under the DO name for €24,000. The cars are not quite as cheap as in China, 
because they have to be retrofitted at great expense. Everything from seat belts to airbags, on account of European safety regulations. The EU wants small cars to have equipment that matches vehicles that can go 200 kilometers on the track. There's no difference, not even in the safety requirements. It's just that in China or in Asia, also in India, we have a lot of vehicles that cost well under 10,000 euros, which I don't think will be available here. And from 2024, every car registered in the EU will have to have complex driver assistance systems that can regulate the speed and warn when the car leaves its lane, as well as extra bells and whistles like driver drowsiness detection. That's where the bureaucratic and technological hurdles that the EU is imposing on the small car sector are a hindrance and push up prices. Small Chinese cars have to undergo a radical overhaul to qualify for EU homologation. And not every cheap Chinese e-car can even pass the test. The European Union level, the standards are there. And I, I, would, I wouldn't accept to lower the standards because of uh, competition from Far East. However, European manufacturers trying to produce a low-cost electric car are also struggling with the EU's costly safety regulations. Somehow, Europe doesn't seem to be the right place for cheap e-cars. I really don't know how to how to make it more affordable. You know, what we what we can do because we have we have the situation, we have the framework. What we have, I doubt that the price will be at the same level as Chinese car. But what we to what we should to do as Europeans are we need to be to we need to be more efficient. I'm optimistic, I want to be optimistic, and we need to be optimistic because we don't have any other choice. But time is running out for the European auto industry. William Lee, the head of Chinese car maker Neo, has announced plans to launch a sub-brand of small electric cars in Europe next year. And Chinese car maker Great Wall, which produces small e-cars like the Aura Funky Cat and Aura R1, has already started to shake up the German market with the help of Switzerland's ML Fry Group. Europe's largest car dealer is making around 200 of its dealerships and service outlets in Germany available to market the Aura Funky Cat, and soon also a revamped version of the Aura R1. Emil Fry made a name for itself in the 1970s when it started selling Japanese brands like Subaru and later Mitsubishi in Germany. In the 1990s, Emil Fry also imported the first Hyundai cars to Germany and helped establish the Korean brand in Europe. There are a couple of similarities uh, to the launch of the uh, Japanese manufacturers in the 70s and the Korean manufacturers in the early 90s. We know especially what is important for a dealer to be successful and how long that will last, um, nobody knows. Uh, we, we have seen other manufacturers uh, take over then, especially in important markets like Germany. Hyundai went independent after being jump-started by ML Fry and now also produces its cars in Europe. That circumvents high EU tariffs and avoids the high costs of import-export. Could this be a blueprint for Chinese car makers? The key question is also going to be, will Chinese uh, producers actually uh, stop exporting only and also stop producing in Europe? And I think once that's happening, um, you know, then they have made it, and I think then they can also contribute to these, these goals of, you know, producing cheaper cars in Europe for European customers. And that will also then trigger a reaction by European car makers that there is a demand for these, and, you know, to also come up with their own solutions. Dieter Traschka is convinced that he's only a pioneer as an importer of Chinese e-cars, and won't be doing this job for more than five years. What the Japanese used to do when the Koreans came. First, there were importers. And then they tried to establish the market themselves. You can gain another market. That's what the Japanese showed. That's what the Koreans showed. And that's what the Chinese are now going to show in a more brutal way. 
And he's convinced that small Chinese e-cars like the Daiyun will play an important role in opening doors to the European market. It doesn't rattle, it doesn't clatter, it runs quietly. Quieter than some cars we produce here in Europe. And for me, who lives in the countryside, and I drive, and I suddenly sense that the ducks on the road don't move because they didn't hear the car. Without China, we'd be driving around without small electric cars. Will China save e-mobility in Europe? They've realized that small vehicles are how you move e-mobility forward. China is the, the savior of the world yeah, in, by providing cheap electric mobility. If I say it in this way, uh, it will open the doors to a lot of discussion. The world is saved by those who buy it. It's always a matter of demand. Yes, clearly China is not only a pacemaker, but I would say the Chinese OEMs are not only pacemakers, but also catalysts yeah, in our transition to electric mobility. Whether small Chinese e-cars overrun Europe in the future, or the European auto industry is spurred on by competition from China to build more affordable e-cars itself, the impetus from China will definitely help make electromobility more affordable for everyone. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below.